Hey, Mark Milan here, and thank you for taking time to look at God's Word today with me. And I have been reading about spirit, soul, and body. It's what I want to talk about today. I would say over the last three months, and this has really been a powerful revelation for me. It has really helped me understand a number of what I would call gray areas in my own spiritual walk. And so I would like to just take a, a, a couple of passages of scripture and introduce you to this in the hopes that you can then, with the Holy Spirit's guidance, uh, learn about it. And I'll tell you different ways you can find some more content on this online. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I think the, the, the anchored verse for this is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23, we're going to look at two other areas of scripture as we talk about this. I don't have any practical steps, but I just want to read what God's word says. And I just want to see what God can pull out of it to help us gain understanding. If you're a believer and you've been walking with the Lord and you've just been trying to get to that place of freedom and victory, I believe that this teaching will help you get there the way it helped me. Um, as a believer, I got saved when I was 13 and I've been seeking the Lord in terms of trying to learn who He is through God's Word and in my own walk uh, with Him. And there was just always a little bit of a gap in understanding for me as a believer. And to me, this, man, I wish I had this years ago because I am experiencing a level of freedom and victory and empowerment in the spirit like I never have. And so I pray today that it would bless you, that it would empower you, and that it would set you in a place of just great victory in your walk with Jesus. So let's take a look. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 says this, Now may the, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our lord jesus christ now it is no accident that the holy spirit inspired the words in this way spirit soul and body spirit soul and body now, it talks about, may the God of peace sanctify you entirely. Another translation says, may the God of peace keep you holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. In other words, completely, entirely. Um, spirit, soul, and body. Now, that idea of spirit, soul, and body is huge to our understanding for what God has done in us and through us through Christ Jesus. Now, I think sometimes we tend to forget that salvation is an eternal uh, event. It's an, it's an act of God through his grace to save a person eternally. But we tend to kind of overlook how it happens and where it happens. I'll give you some things to think about before we, we go into John chapter 3. I want to look at John chapter 3 and then Romans chapter 8. But, you know, I like to watch shows like CSI and uh, crime investigations. And uh, sometimes there is a homicide and the detectives show up. And they will show up and say something like, we have identified a body. Okay? Now, that's interesting. That's interesting that they would say we have identified a body. What does that tell us through the natural lens while we are here on earth? We have a body, but my body is not who I am. And you see, we because we're on earth and because we deal, we interact, and all of our experiences are somehow tethered through our natural senses of taste, smell, touch, a sight, hearing. All of these senses, which are part of our body, uh, kind of lead us to forget that our body is just where we live in, but our body is not who we are. I have a body, but my body is not who I am. Um, I'll give you an example, another way to think about it. 
I have a car, okay? And my car is dark gray. And uh, if I had my car parked out front, and let's say um, someone scratched it or hit it by accident and you saw it, then you would come in and say, hey, someone hit your car. And I go, oh man, my car got hit. Okay, it's something that I have. I have a car, but it's not who I am. I have a body, you have a body but it's not who you are. You live in a body. So when I pass away, people will be able to see my body. If I'm, if I'm, you know, if I'm having a memorial service and I'm in a casket, they will be able to see my body, but they won't see who I am, the person. And so it's important for us to look at this scripture very carefully because the word of God is saying, may the Lord keep you spirit soul, and body completely, wholly. In other words, those three elements make up uh, my entirety as a, a living being. So we have a spirit, which is our eternal person. That's the real person. When we get saved through salvation, it happens in our spirit because our spirit lives forever. Okay, so my body, something can happen to my body and my body can die, but my spirit lives on eternally. That's why uh, I was saying that salvation is an eternal experience. It's a spiritual experience that happens in the spirit of a person. Okay, and that spirit will go on to live forever, either with the Lord or without the Lord. God doesn't force anyone into a relationship with him. He offers his relationship to all people through Jesus, who through Jesus now our spirit can be born again and joined to Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 17. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So in our spirit, we're born again, but our we, we, we are spirit we have a soul, I'll unpack that in a moment, and we live in a body. So if my body gets sick, my spirit is not sick. My body can get sick, but my spirit is completely healed. So it's important for me to understand how the Lord is teaching me how to see myself and how to, for you, how, for, how you should see yourself, which is to see yourself in the spirit. When God saved you, he wasn't trying to save your body because he plans to give you a new body. If you read 1 Thessalonians at the end of chapter 4, Paul's talking about we will get new bodies, glorified bodies. Uh, he talks about it in Corinthians when he talks about this tent, this temporary living vessel. Um, and that one day we will be given a new vessel. Okay, Romans Chapter 12 says in verse 2 says, Therefore, let God renew your mind. So let's talk about the soul for a minute. So we've established that we are spirit, soul, and body. And I know, I know this may be hard to comprehend. If you can get this, it'll really, really radically change how you walk with the Lord. I'm telling you. So I'm asking the Holy Spirit to just give you revelation right now. So we're saved in our spirit. Our spirit is what gets born again. We're going to take a look at that in a moment. And our body is where we live temporarily, right? Scriptures say that we are citizens of heaven. So spiritually speaking, in my spirit, I am joined with Christ and I'm seated with Christ in spirit because a spirit is not limited to matter and space, right? A spirit is like air or I can breathe air, air is inside of me, but it's also in this room and it's also inside of you. So there's no limitation physically according to matter where that can only be contained into one place. So a spirit is not like human flesh, that it can only be at one place at one time. And so I am joined to Christ. I, we are citizens of heaven, but I'm currently in this season of life. I am limited physically right here, right now, because I live in this body, okay? So I have a body, 
I have a soul, but I am a spirit. I am a spirit that has a soul and it lives in a body. The soul can be identified and explained as the mind, the will, and the emotions, or your personality even. Your personality is kind of like the collection of those things plus your core beliefs. Those are the components of what your personality is without getting too deep in psychology. So, the mind is not the brain. The brain is the actual physical matter that exists inside of my skull. That's my brain. My brain is an organ, okay? It has electronic impulses and it has synapses and uh, brain waves and memory conduits. That's my brain, but my mind, okay? My mind is abstract, it's immaterial. I can't touch my mind. I can't see my mind. If you scan my skull, you will see my brain. If you scan my brain, you will see the activity of my physical brain. But where does the activity come from? It comes from the mind, and I cannot see the mind. But I have one. The scripture says I've been given the mind of Christ. So as a spirit, I've been born again, but now in my soul, my mind, my will, the things I want to do and I'm determined to do, and my emotions, those are being renewed. In other words, that has not been born again yet. That is being transformed and sanctified daily. And it, the Word of God tells us through God's Word, let God renew your mind by the renewing of your mind, by the washing of the Word. And then my body, Okay, so my body, I get to surrender, my soul, I get to surrender to Christ every day because my spirit has been born again. So, let me read the passage again and then we're going to jump to John chapter 3. So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, in other words, completely and wholly, and may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved complete. Okay, and... and and God's word doesn't say body, soul, and spirit. It says spirit, soul, and body. It's teaching us to pay attention to the order of things. Now, let's look at John chapter 3. This is really key to understanding spirit, soul, and body. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to talk to Jesus because he's trying to understand his message. And Jesus helps him understand the new birth. Okay, so I'll start in verse 3. Um, Nicodemus came to talk to him, verse 1 and 2. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He will not be able to see it or understand it at all. Um, another passage in the New Testament says, For the things of God they cannot see, they're veiled. Why? Because they haven't been born again in their spirit. Let's go on to read. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born who is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? And Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Of course, being born of water, this is how we're naturally born, right? We're incubated in a sack in, in the woman's womb. And so we're born of water naturally. But then he goes on to say, and of spirit. That which is born of the flesh, this is Jesus talking, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I say to you, you must be born again. Now the translation born again actually says born from above. In other words, born from Heaven, in other words, something above or from heaven causes a rebirth for us spiritually, not naturally, but spiritually. He goes on to say that um, what he speaks is spirit. That which is flesh is of flesh and that which is spirit of spirit. And then he goes on to say that the words I speak unto you are of spirit. So this is another passage that helps us understand that Jesus was teaching Nicodemus and he's teaching you and he's teaching me and he's teaching us 
then in order for us to have an eternal relationship with God, it's in our spirit that it has to take place. Our spirit has to be born again. We are born with a sinful nature spiritually. And that sinful nature spiritually impacts our soul, which then gets expressed through our body. Spirit, soul, and body, right? So when we get born again in our spirit, our soul is not born again and our body is not born again. Our spirit is. So now we are trying to align our soul, our mind, will, and emotions to our spirit, and we're trying to submit our body to our spirit as well. So our soul and body gets aligned to our spirit. And one day, when we are made complete in the presence of the Lord, our soul and body will be completely saved or transformed into this newness of life, which we have been given in our spirit. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 as we kind of close this off. And I'm hoping that this is kind of like, oh my gosh, stretching you to think because it's so important. I'm going to jump around a couple of passages here. Romans chapter 7. Okay, let's start here. Romans chapter 7, verse 5. Foul. For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. In other words, our body was a slave to death because our spirit nature was sinful. Our spirit nature was sinful. And there's nothing you can do to save your own spirit. Nothing. This is why good works cannot save you. Good works, the intentions of donations and doing things in the natural realm cannot save you spiritually. Only God can save you spiritually and only Jesus can bring salvation to the spirit. That's why it's so important. That's why self-righteousness was an issue for the Pharisees with Jesus because they believed that by their actions, by their physical actions, whether they intended to do it in their emotions or not, but they were believing that because they were living righteously in their body by what they were doing, that made them saved. And Jesus was like, no, 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 no. You can't save yourself. Only salvation comes through Christ and Christ alone. No one comes to the Father, but through Jesus Christ. So salvation is an event that happens to us. We access it by faith. And we are given a brand new spirit. I want to show you one more passage just as I was saying that. But let's go back to this. Verse 6, chapter 7, verse 6. But now we have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound, so that we serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. The newness of the spirit. We've been given the Spirit of Christ in salvation. So now my spirit is joined with His Spirit. And now I'm trying to teach my thoughts, my emotions, my will, um, my feelings, and my body to live according to my spirit, which has been born again. Romans chapter 8. And we're almost done. I know this is... I'm just trying to get you to to introduce you to this and then uh, I'm going to I'm going to encourage you to kind of keep studying this in your time with the Lord. Romans chapter 8 starting in verse 7. But the mind, okay? We're not talking about the brain, but the mind, okay? The mind of who? My mind. In other words, my soul is mind, will and emotion. So I have a mind, okay? But in my spirit, I have the mind of Christ, but in my natural person, the soul that I still have, I am trying to align my mind to understand what God tells me of who I am according to what Christ has done in my spirit. My body is not who I am. My behavior is not who I am. My behavior is, a, is a, an expression of thoughts and feelings and triggers and beliefs, but it's my spirit. My spirit is who I am, and God's word is clear on who I am in Christ according to my spirit. Let's just read this because it's, it's, it's just awesome and powerful. Because the mind set on the flesh, the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do it. Now that's powerful. That says that my body, no matter what I do, is hostile towards God. 
it will not and won't and will fight to the nail to resist God. Verse 8, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, I, I have a body, I have flesh. It's not telling me that I cannot please God. What it's saying that the person who is living according to their flesh, in other words, if I have not been born again, spirit, soul, and body, my body, my flesh is what rules my life. It tells me how to feel, tells me what to do. It leads and directs my life. But when we get saved, it switches. God switches the authority back to the spirit and he tells us and commands us and admonishes us to no longer live according to the flesh, or what Paul calls the old self, the old nature, but to live according to the spirit. However, verse 9, this is God's word. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin. Okay, how could I be dead? How could I be dead? My body is functioning. My soul is functioning. There's a distinction here that Paul's saying. In other words, when a person is dead, when it says in Ephesians chapter 2, for you were dead in your sins. Okay, I was functioning. My body was functioning and moving and active. Spiritually dead is what we're talking about. A person who does, not understand, who does not know Christ as a personal relationship is spiritually dead. And God sees us according to the Spirit. He doesn't look at your body. Every day, if you are saved and you are in Christ, God does not look at your body and judge you according to your body. He doesn't judge you according to your soul. He judges you according to your spirit. And if you are born again, that means you are joined to Christ, which means that Christ is in you and you are in Christ. And so when God looks at Jesus, he sees you. And when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. You are one. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. For he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Man, that's good stuff. Man, I, ho I hope you're getting this. Let's read a couple of verses down. And then I want to read one more passage and then we're done. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Verse 14, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God or the children of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading back to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba is a, is a term of endearment. It's a nearness like a child uh, resting upon their father's chest. We cry out, Abba, Father. It's a very, very intimate relationship. Verse 16, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself testifies with our spirit. Okay, spirit, soul, and body. So the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children heirs also of God, fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified together with him him. Okay, so we looked at the passage in Thessalonians that says we are spirit, soul, and body. We looked at John chapter 3 where Jesus talks about that which is of the flesh is of the spirit, that which is of the spirit is spirit. The words I speak unto you are spirit and life. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they be born again, and that cannot happen naturally. It happens spiritually. But let's kind of bring this to closure, which to me, which is, is, is the clearest and most powerful way to analyze this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to read a couple of passages and then we're done. And I have enjoyed this. I hope you have enjoyed it too. Let's look here. Uh, let's start for verse 14. Okay. Now, if you want to read all of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I talked about this vessel, this earthly tent. That's what chapter 5 is all about. If you start reading from verse 1, Paul talks about this vessel, this body that we currently live in, and then he works his way down, and then he talks about, for we walk by faith and not by sight. If I were to ask you how you feel physically, that's pretty easy. You just got to stop and take an inventory and, and you say, man, I feel great. I feel strong or I feel weak today. I'm hungry. 
uh, all these physical things you can understand. If I asked you how you felt emotionally, uh, you would take an inventory from your mind. You can tell whether you're happy or whether you're sad or whether you're feeling encouraged or discouraged or anxious. Uh, nothing about your body or your soul uh, is something that you have to seek counsel from God or, or, you know what, let me go pray about that and I'll let you know in a moment how I feel emotionally. It's, it's not difficult. But in our spirit, we cannot see it. It's by faith. It's entirely by faith. Salvation comes by faith. It's an act of God through His grace to make me born again in my spirit. So how do I know who I am and how I feel according to my spirit? It's right here. The Word of God is spirit and it's life. And this tells me, if you want to know how I'm doing, I'm going to tell you what this says. Because the Word of God is what tells me what my spirit is and who I am in Christ. So let's look at what Paul says. Chapter 5, 2 Corinthians, verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he, Jesus, died for all so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Do you know that because of what Christ did on the cross, God no longer regards you according to the flesh? And we are no longer supposed to regard anyone according to the flesh. We're supposed to see them according to the Spirit and the Spirit alone. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, in other words, according to the form that he had, yet we know him now no longer in this way. Verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay, now... I told you that I would share some ways for you to learn about this. Uh, a teacher, a Bible teacher called Andrew Womack has a bunch of teachings that you can buy. He has a book, he has a lot of content on YouTube that is extremely helpful. And so I'm just gonna pull from him because he helped me understand this so well and I just wanna share it with you. If we look at that passage and we go, all things have passed away, okay, through the process of elimination, spirit, soul, and body, has my body passed away? What has been made new? When I got saved, I was 13 years old. My body didn't change. The way I looked physically didn't change in that moment. Let's say I, you and I, we just got saved. If you were five foot seven, then when you get saved, you're still five foot seven. Nothing changes in you physically. Did anything change in you emotionally? Now, you might have an emotional experience, but the memories, the triggers, maybe from past hurts or betrayals, a lot of those things still stay stuck in you in that moment because those are not the things that Paul is referring to that have passed away. What the scripture is teaching us that our spirit, whoever's, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. What part? The Spirit is a new creation in Christ Jesus. And now because I understand that my spirit has been declared righteous and holy, that God sees me through the righteousness of Jesus Christ and His perfection and His love, God's love towards me is not based on my performance. It's based on what Christ has done for me. God put me in Christ so that He could love me eternally and perfectly every single day and that nothing that I could do can change anything about it. That's the power of the gospel. So I'm born again in my spirit and I have been made a new creature. My spirit does not and cannot sin ever again. My soul can sin. My body can sin. But in my spirit, I am eternally saved and holy and righteous in Christ Jesus. So now, the journey is getting my soul and my body to align with who I am in my spirit in Christ Jesus. And to close so that I can be kept holy and completely 
spirit, soul, and body. Man, that is powerful stuff. I hope that it stretched your thinking and I hope it causes you to look at yourself entirely differently according to what God's word says. Study it, get into it, research it, and I pray that it would empower you to live the life that God's called you to live. That's all I have for you today. Until next time, from my heart to yours.